The assistant coaches are Mark Jablonski and Louis Martinez. Head coach of the Mountaineers, Carlo Matlabaro, the Shredder University Mountaineers. Now the starting lineup for the Colorado College Tigers. Number two, a freshman guard, Denari Bolton. Number 10, a sophomore guard, Scott Wood. Number 11, a junior guard, Alex Russo. Number 15, a sophomore forward, Kevin Tillier. And number 33, a sophomore center, Adrian Price. The assistant coaches are Matt Scott, Cameron Jones, Kalika Adams, and Jackson Cameron. Head coach of Colorado College, Jeff Conover. Colorado College Tigers, Schweiner Mountaineers. Two quarterfinals down, two to go, and we get to kick off the men's side of the tournament. Welcome back, folks, to Tiger Network. I'm Brian Yenselson, joined by Reed Rosales, ready to call the Shriner Mountaineers and the Colorado College Tigers. Pumped up as this Friday just keeps on giving to us, Reed. It certainly does, and it doesn't stop here. This game is going to look to be very interesting with the SCAC men's basketball side of the bracket being so, so balanced this year. This could go either way. You are absolutely right about that. When you look at this men's bracket, there is no telling who could win it all. And the Tigers, the Mountaineers looking to continue their seasons into Saturday. The winner will face San Thomas, but first, it is a battle between the four and the five seed. You've got Devin Filio, you've got Camden Ross at center court, and we are underway in San Antonio. Alex Russo joining Denari Boykin, Scott Rueg, Filio, and Adrian Price, the starting five for the Tigers. Who get this first possession of the game, sends it down low to Devin Filio, who finishes off the rim. First two points of the game go to Colorado College, and now Schreiner with the ball, Dylan Mackey, Bo Cervantes, Camden Ross, Darian Gibson, and Alex De Hoyos, the starting five for Schreiner. It is Mackey down low, he can't bank it home, and the rebound goes to Boykin. The Colorado College Tigers 12 and 13 this season, nine and seven in SCAC play. The Mountaineers just flip-flop that, 12 and 13 overall, but they have a six and 10 record which is why they're the number five seed. A strong drive here from Boykin, and the bank appears to be open late night tonight. That's two off of the glass for Colorado College to jump in front by four. And this Colorado College team, they're a long way from home. There is a good crowd here in from Kerrville tonight. Underneath the basket, can't finish there. Darian Gibson tried to get it. And Colorado College looking to repeat what they did twice this year, and that is beat Shriner. They did it in Kerrville. They did it in Colorado Springs. Can they do it in San Antonio? Boykin misses, gets his own, can't follow it up. The touch wasn't quite there for number two, and the Mountaineers will push it the other way. And look who it is starting for Shriner. Alex De Hoyos, the fifth-year senior, scoops it down. 4-2 making just his eighth start of the season, but not many have made their presence felt more in this conference than Alex De Hoyos. Here he's called for a shove defensively, but De Hoyos, the first team all SCAC member last year, has not been a frequent member of the starting lineup this year, but coach El Rakabawi going with him when it matters most in this SCAC tournament. Filio calling for it down low, and he got so much attention that it left an open Alex Russo. 6-2 for Colorado College after just a pair of minutes gone by. Cervantes turns the corner, his pull up is good. Rueg pushes past the little full court pressure shown by Schreiner. And now he's dealing with De Hoyos who is a menace defensively all over Ruig here. Able to get it to Price. Price battling down low, turning left, dealing with the length, but before that, he's gonna be called for a travel. Turnover by Colorado College. And this game, it is starting off very quickly. Back and forth, back and forth. 
These are just two so evenly matched teams. We'll get you so many numbers and stories as the game goes along here. A steal by Devin Filio, and the Tiger is trying to get out in front. Ruig pumps the three, now backs it out to Russo. Ruig back with it. Filio has been the go-to. Three men attack him. It's off his foot. Boykin able to save it, though. And right back to 15. Price has room down low. But the defense by Camden Ross denies it. And the Mountaineers escape with it. This is going to be a big physical matchup. You have some massive bodies down low, especially Colorado College. That is their strength. They feel that their length and their size down low is what allowed them to beat Shri beat them twice. Trying to make it a perfect three for three and a spin move here. Out of control leads to a jump ball. It'll stick here with the black and maroon. And for these Shriner Mountaineers, they're looking to keep up this time. Well, you lose two times to the same team. You do not want to make it a third loss in a row, especially in the conference tournament. Darian Gibson over the defense of Colorado College to even it up at six. And this is fully what we expect. Russo faces some pressure bringing the ball up. Now in the hands of Price, top of the key as the offense gets going. And Camden Ross all over Price, but Price takes it himself. And that's going to be another travel. Adrian Price, the sophomore from Aurora, struggling a little bit to keep his feet on the court. And just like that, the first media timeout has arrived. Colorado 6, Shriner 6. Reed, we know that this men's side is just so even. And it's just four minutes gone by. We know it's super early, but this seems to be a sign of what we, we can expect tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. Yeah, and this game is so even, and both of these two teams, when one of them goes up to St. Thomas, St. Thomas, they may be undefeated in conference, but they could be taken to task by one of these two teams here. And these are two teams that are just absolutely overjoyed to be here, taking very different paths, but nonetheless, they have arrived in the Alamo City for Colorado College, congratulations and welcome back to the SCAC tournament. This is the first time that the Tigers are in the postseason since 2018. Jeff Conero in his third season as head coach bringing the Tigers back and they are looking to make some noise. He says, people have said, what a great season you guys have had. And he is quick to remind them, the season's not over. We want to keep going. And then for Shriner, well, for a minute there, it looked like they may not even make it in their final game of the regular season. They were down and they had their backs against the wall with 12-13 to go at home against TLU. Shriner trailed by 10 and then they flipped the switch, went on a 19-0 run and were able to pull out that win to be here tonight. That 19-0 run powered primarily by Camden Ross and here they are now trying to take what went from barely making the tournament into someone who could truly make a run. Out of the timeout, Price handles the loose ball that DeHoyos lost, and Colorado College takes back over. Edgar Romero handling the ball, gets it out to Boykin, and that's where the Tigers want the ball, in Boykin's hands here. It is stripped out of his hands, and the Shriner Mountaineer is looking to run. Quick drive into the paint, a spin in, but good defense prevents Mackey from finishing. And the rebound goes to Trey Crawford. Cervantes guarding Boykin there. Now Price, we've seen him at the top of the court here. Trying to engineer something for the Colorado College offense and yet another travel. And maybe they're just so used to traveling away from their isolated position in Colorado Springs, but that's three travels called on the Tigers. Yeah, and you don't want that scoring drought of three minutes. You gotta find a way to quench the drought and getting called for travels, you ain't gonna do it that way. The Tigers, the only team that had to fly down to San Antonio this weekend. We did get confirmation that they flew. The reason their bus is visible though is because they had a bus driven down here so that they could have it now that they're in San Antonio. But they certainly earn frequent flyer miles. 
Nice pass down low to De Hoyos. He kicks it out. The three-point attempt short there for Bronson Evans. Cleared out by CC. The overhead pass to Ruig, just a little too much. And the claps coming from the Shriner bench as they force a turnover. Yeah, and we got a great crowd out here tonight. Maybe on the top of your screen, you can see some of the other teams relaxing in the upper stands. We know the St. Thomas Celts will be watching this one with their eyes wide open. The winner of this one headed to a matchup with them. Cervantes dumps it down. A foul going to be called as Mackey will get a pair. Dylan Mackey, the sophomore from Houston, Texas, has started in five games in a row after starting in just three of the first 20. Rattles on that first free throw, someone that Coach El Rockabawi says has had a little bit of a roller coaster. But as of late, the roller coaster trending up. Two free throws go, and Schreiner takes a two point lead. All sorts of new names out there for Colorado College as the starting unit takes a breather. Asher Knobziger with the ball right now. He loses his dribble and is in some trouble. Defended by Camden Ross, eventually gets it to Dittman. Now it'll be Magnus with the shot clock in single digits. Someone has to go up soon. Down to two, one, and it banks home. Big points for Colorado College there. Not letting the shot clock expire before getting points. It was the freshman from Denver, Colorado. Unfazed by the noise in this gym. Ties it up at eight with 13 and a half to go. Cervantes nearly shuffles his feet. Instead gets it down low to Camden Ross. And that's where Camden Ross wants to be. But his jumper no good. And a jump ball sends it to CC. So you can see the intention of both teams. They want to get it into the hands of their star players. But that's easy enough to see, easy enough to say. And it's also what the other coaches see, of course. So they're planning their entire games around the likes of Camden Ross. It'll be fascinating to see who wins the chess match. Right now, all tied up at eight. Seven minutes gone by. Cervantes guarding Romero closely. Now the screen from Dittman, the switch. Puts Mackey on the defender before he gets rid of it and now an advantage size-wise here for 22 Trey Crawford. He goes over the top and drains the three. He saw the size advantage over Cervantes and took full advantage. Mountaineers swinging the ball around. Hard drive rejected by Kevin Dittman. And boy, have we seen that before. He averages a block a game, and it is a massive part of what Colorado College does. They average four a game, second best in the SEAC. Cervantes, top of the key three, way off for him. And chance of air ball coming from those Tiger fans in the stands. Colorado College really taking their time, bringing it up the court. Now, a little sprint there from Romero to ensure they get it through. Magnus in the paint, an arm wrestling match, makes it another jump ball. This time, it belongs to the Mountaineers. Yeah, and this game, it's going to be very competitive, very aggressive. We may see many more jump balls as this game goes on. What a job by Camden Ross, who is so known for his offense, of course, but don't forget the stellar defense that he shows night in and night out. Some confusion here on the jump ball should be clearly belonging to Schreiner. Not sure what the holdup is here. Officials timeout. But we'll get an officials timeout as they work to figure it out. So it should be Schreiner ball as they trail by three with 12-11 to go. But in a game like this, absolutely have to get every decision right. So the officials now coming out of the timeout and saying that the jump ball will stay with Colorado, but Coach El Rakabawi is 
absolutely devastated because this should belong to Shriner. And the Shriner fans vocally upset. Let's see if they can figure this one out. Yeah, and like you said, it belongs to Shriner. Very strange development here. Brings up the question, Reed. Why is it called a jump ball if they don't just jump for it? It's one of those great mysteries of basketball, isn't it? I just don't get it. If you're going to call it a jump ball, you might as well jump for it and avoid confusion like this. Why rely on an arrow and why rely on chance to decide who gets the ball with each jump ball? Just let the athleticism take care of it. Exactly. But... Unfortunately for us, sometimes confusion like this is bound to happen. Well, the officials did figure it out. Referee saying, my bad, the ball does belong to Shriner. As the Mountaineers fans were ready to storm the court, it seemed like. Many of them in the house, you see a great look at them there. That entire side right now, pretty much cheering for the Mountaineers. We'll see if that hometown field can help them just about an hour south of their campus in Kerrville. Trying to get it to Ross down low. Instead, Mackey takes care of it himself. Strong drive for the sophomore. With so much attention being paid to Camden Ross, there will be lanes open. They got to take care of it just like that. Marcus Villarreal applying all sorts of pressure on Romero. Shot clock already halfway used up as Knopfziger. Looking to make something happen. It'll be Trey Crawford from deep. That's another three for Crawford. Yeah, great series of plays there by Colorado. Extending their lead to four. Mackey kicks it to the open shooter from three. A little short there is Reed. And Crawford gathers the board and looking on pace to repeat an effort he had against Schreiner last time. His first career double with a career high 14 points. As the foul is called here, but Crawford, someone who has made an impact as he finally has gotten time on the court for the Tigers. We'll continue talking about him, but want to make sure to tell you it is time for immediate timeout. Colorado 14, Shriner 10, but it allows us to keep talking about this Trey Crawford guy that we were talking so much about. As Jeff Conero mentioned in his third season as head coach, Talk to me about Trey Crawford way back when the Tigers were here to face the other Tigers in early January. And he said that Trey Crawford is really just a freshman because even though his roster position shows junior, he tore his ACL, so missed an entire year, and had that shortened COVID season. And so for him, this is the first real season of full basketball that he's gotten to play, and they are just thrilled to have him fully healthy and contributing to the Colorado College attack. Yeah, and he's going to be crucial in this game when the two teams are so well matched as they are that he's going to play such a crucial role. It was an interesting comparison, and it makes sense since Colorado College is in the same state as the Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray, also someone who has missed a lot of time due to injuries, and Coach Conero saying it took him some time to knock off the rust. It also took Crawford some time. But now that he has, you can see the types of things that he can do already knocking down two three-pointers and giving Colorado a four-point lead during this media timeout, which is coming to an end. Both sides ready to keep going. And what has just been a tremendous day of basketball already, and we are thrilled to have so much more ahead. As Crawford brings it in from the timeout, and the Tigers take back their time. 15 seconds on the shot clock. And a violation called on Colorado College. We saw that earlier, Reed. Don't see it called all the time, but a five-second call for holding the ball for too long with a defender close up to you. Yeah, and for Colorado College, you can't be making those types of mistakes when the teams are so well-matched. Because Shriner, they can make you pay for that. And right now it is so early, but Colorado College shooting 67% from the field. However, they're only up four because they turned the ball over seven times, keeping Schreiner right there as we're halfway home. The three-pointer on the way rattles out for Mateus Reichart Bloom, and then a loose ball fouled on the rebound attempt. 
Home number 14, Ron Sonnet makes his first. Team foul number three. Third team foul against Shriner, just one against Colorado College, as it's been a pretty clean first half from that perspective. Boykin, the leading scorer for Colorado College, back in the game and taking the ball all the way up the court before finding Ruig. Now Price will look to go to work. Adrian Price, two defenders on him. Not enough to stop number 33. He's just so strong in the paint. Not a lot of people can stop him. Travel called on Schreiner, and it'll head right back to the black and gold. Exactly 10 minutes to go now. Romero handling the ball. Has a bigger man on him. Gets it to number two. And Price looking to post up again. Rodriguez trying to deny him the ball. It'll be Crawford then who takes the free throw shot. A little short. The Mountaineer is off and running. Before Mackey slows it down a tad. Then lulls Romero into sleep. And we'll get some contact called in his favor. That'll be a push called on number 12, Romero. Mario Johnson, the first year, will send it in newly into the game. Christian Rodriguez, another first year for a Shriner squad full of youth. Look at how hard it is to move Price. Rodriguez certainly tried. Finds a teammate in the corner. Now trying to get it back to him. Mario Johnson has to go up high to save it. And the shot clock down to five. Now four as the Tiger defense roaring here. Mountaineer coaches barking their orders across the court. Making sure they know there's four seconds left. Reed will send it in. Reichart Bloom receives it. He'll go to the rim over the defender, but it's way off. Crawford a little slow to get up on the other end. He hustles back though. Price taking advantage of the smaller man, but couldn't finish. So we've seen some positive and some negatives from Price so far but clearly a focus for the offense. And on the other end, another foul going against CC. Shriner just won for their last nine, have not scored in three minutes, but if they keep drawing these fouls, they'll certainly take a trip to the line to, to cure those symptoms. Yeah, and for Colorado, it's not as so much that Shriner's really keeping up with them. It's that Colorado's giving them chances to score. Pass deflected by Russo, but it stays with Schreiner. 20 seconds on the shot clock. De Hoyos was the goal. Instead, it goes to Ross. The fight won by Price, and then the ball to Boykin. Camden Ross not doing much of anything yet, as Colorado College has all their attention set on him. Boykin. Easy finger roll that goes awry. He can't believe it. He had two points guaranteed before missing it. The other way, that's two points for Camden Ross. So a little four-point swing there on what looked to be an eight-point lead turns into four. Yeah, sometimes you miss those easy layups and you hit yourself for it. But what you got to do is come back and get the next one. Contact, going to be called a foul on Johnson, who thought he was moving side to side in time with Boykin, but the official says, sorry, that's a foul. foul number 41, It'll allow Coach El Rakabawi to send in two more, Darian Gibson and Cervantes, the starters back out there. So four of the five in the starting unit currently on the court. 
for Colorado College. They are back with their starting unit, led by their point guard, Russo, now with Boykin posting up, and this time he does finish. Gibson one on one on Boykin. Nowhere to go, loses the dribble, has to get bailed out by Cervantes. He's denied by Russo, and they'll have to reset with the shot clock in single digits. De Hoyos has it now, dribbling, puts up the three short. Front rim goes to Boykin, and Ruig can't handle the pass, and he steps out of bounds. In case you didn't see it, the Shriner bench sure did. Yeah, he slid to a stop. He thought he didn't go out of bounds, but the foot just slightly touching the line there. 7.21 to go. Colorado College, a six-point lead as we reach this media timeout. We'll take a quick break on Tiger Network. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Tiger Network. Colorado College up six. And Coach Conero talking to his Tigers. Used an interesting little comparison to describe how they feel to be here for the first time since 2018. He says it's like getting a new car. You're kind of trying to figure everything out. Where is everything? Where do I need to turn to? How do I drive it? How fast does it go? It's kind of how they feel because... They got here super early. They were the first visiting team to reach Trinity because they thought that everyone got a practice time the day before, yet they were the only ones in the gym. So they had Webster Gym all to themselves, had a lot of free time to work with. If you followed them on Instagram, you saw that they had a little takeover as they perused the city of San Antonio. And so they're getting used to it. They're not accustomed to being in the postseason tournament, but Coach Conero certainly hoping to make it more familiar. Yeah, and Colorado College get those extra reps in. That's probably what's helping them out right now. Camden Ross, that hook shot goes for Camden Ross and maybe that'll get him going. When he heats up, he heats up quickly. We saw it on full display to save Shriner season. Shriner gets back defensively, down just four despite shooting 33% in this first half. Put back, won't go for 15, Filio. De Hoyos using the defender behind him, goes up wildly and then the rebound and the put back still won't go. And the arm pointing in the direction of Colorado College. Two attempts, both don't go for Shriner. Schreiner setting up their full court pressure. And this zone that Coach Conero said is very confusing if you've never seen it. And if you look back at the Colorado College season, as a ball, a foul away from the ball, called here against Schreiner, it looks like, on De Hoyos. It was a win at Shriner in the third conference game of the season that really said to many people around the conference, Colorado College is here to compete. They won their first two games at home where they're so good against Austin and Dallas, but going on the road to Kerrville to beat a team that was picked to finish third in the conference really sent shockwaves around the SEAC. And it wasn't temporary. Here they are in the postseason tournament, thanks in large part to those two wins over the Mountaineers. Late shot clock attempt will lead to the turnover as the defense is really clamping up for both sides here in the first half. And Colorado College, they are one of the toughest 
places to play as a team on the road. The altitude really gives them an advantage on their home court. Great move and an even better block by Filio. That's two rejections for Colorado College. Now Ruig the three, too strong. Price gets the board, now Boykin takes over and he's denied, but a foul call on Johnson as Boykin took a hard hit to the ground. Yeah, it looked like he landed on his side there. See on the replay. That looked to be all ball from Johnson. Maybe some contact on the way up before that. And the officials will send Denari Boykin to the line. These will be the first free throw attempts for Colorado College, coming from the freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. First free throw bounces in. Boykin, talk about making an entrance as a freshman, averaging 16 points a game. That is second in the conference. And he's still got three years ahead of him. A scary thought for those that will have to play him. And he gets both of his free throws to go. Colorado up six with 5.20 to go. Mackey around the screen. Cervantes fakes the three. Now the mid-range look. Front rim, battle for the rebound. And the hustle play keeps it for Mackey. Shrinal will get another opportunity. Cervantes looking for help, gets Mackey. Dump off, hard to handle. Eventually ends up with the Tigers. As Christian Caldwell had to hesitate for just a moment and then a slip and slide. That's four travels for Colorado College. Yeah, and for Schreiner, scoring drought about two minutes and they're one for the last seven shots. They really need the offense to get going here because they're only six points behind Colorado College. Only six points behind because those turnovers continue to rack up for Colorado College. Ten now in the first half alone. Two defenders there. Force the jump ball. That is Filio again. And the jump ball this time belongs to Colorado College. But you've seen how big of an impact the blocks are having. In their last win over Shriner, Colorado blocked eight blocks. Blocked eight shots, I guess you want to say. A season high until they got eight in the very next game. And then 11 against TLU. It's something that has really grown on this defense. Coach Connor is saying they preach it. Use your height, use your length. And it's having a clear effect on these Shriner drivers. Yeah, and when you have the height advantage, you should definitely utilize it to its fullest extent. And I agree, it's on full display in this game right here. Ruig guarded by Cervantes. Price finds an opening, takes it to town, and then there's a block for Shriner. Mario Johnson says, not in my house. Step back three, Shriner can't connect thanks to Mackey, but the board gotten by Camden Ross, who finishes with the putback. So Camden Ross hasn't gotten much going on his own, so he takes care of the glass and gets the second opportunity to pull Shriner within four with under four to go. Shriner defender falls down. Rue can't capitalize. And saved in the corner nearly. A sneak attack there by Ruig. Johnson the other way, underneath the basket, won't go, but guess who again? Camden Ross. And one opportunity on the way. Yeah, Schreiner really pulling it in near the end of this first half. They took a second to add the points, but there they are. 20 to 18 now the score with 3.25 to go in San Antonio. Colorado has been on top all half long, but Schreiner creeping back thanks to Camden Ross, and it's starting to look like it looked in that final game of the regular season, Reed. But wow, we, we have to revisit that, don't you think? Yeah. 
So let's take a second to revisit what the Shriner Mountaineers did to arrive in San Antonio. So as a reminder, they were down by 10 with 12 minutes to go with everything on the line. A loss and they do not advance to the playoffs. So what do they do? They go on a 19-0 run to beat Texas Lutheran. But it wasn't just a 19-0 run. It was complete and utter domination by Camden Ross, who just took over when his team needed him. And when I say took over, well, the team was feeding him, and he scored seven in a row, and he scored 11 of those 19 to almost single-handedly put his team into the playoffs. Just a stellar performance, and the numbers really back it up. He had 23 points and 22 rebounds. The first player in the conference to do that, 20 rebounds and 20 points in a conference game since 2006. 17 years since we've seen a performance like that of Camden Ross. Yeah, and he's just such a good player, so talented. And one of the most clutch factors is the clutch factor, one of the most important factors in all of sports. Who can come through when it matters most? Well, for Shriner, it has been the sophomore from Cibolo, Texas, better known as the little town outside of San Antonio, home to Steele High School, where Camden Ross attended. So I'm sure he has some friends and family in attendance as the Shriner crowd continues to grow. And a discussion between officials as we exit the media timeout. But it'll lead to the one shot that we're expecting from Camden Ross to try to complete the three-point play. And he does. A one-point lead now for Colorado College. Russell McFarland in the game. He has the ball right now. The freshman Magnus cut, had room, but he couldn't hang on to the ball. And Schreiner looking to take the lead. Yeah, and for Colorado College, it's going to extend about a two-minute scoring drought. They're one for their last ten shots. Mackie alley-oop to Camden Ross, and what an exclamation point for Schreiner's first lead of the game. A beautiful alley-oop there. You don't see many of those. But the entire energy has shifted to the Mountaineers. Their defense all over Colorado College. They're trying to get back in it. Magnus down to McFarland. The tall trees of Shriner get the miss. And then the foul going against Boykin as the Shriner defense not backing down. Yeah, and Boykin, not very happy about that one. But for Shriner, this is a prime opportunity to extend and get maybe a two-possession, multiple-possession lead before the end of the first half. A 7-0 run. We were warning viewers that Colorado College was ahead and was shooting the lights out, but their turnovers let Shriner stick around. And now they'll look to add on to this one-point lead with free throws coming up. Dylan Mackey will get the two free throws. First one, good for him. Already five points, three rebounds, and an assist for the sophomore. Too strong on that one. McFarland gets the rebound. And the lead is two for Schreiner with just over two minutes to go. Trying to get it to McFarland. Camden Ross, the defender on him. Russo. Now, the new face. Dennis can't get it to go, but he gets the cleanup duty. Deontay Dennis, the first time we've called that name. The senior from Denver, Colorado, the only senior on this roster. And someone who being in this tournament means a whole lot to. Ross can't get his hook shot to go. And the Tigers looking to get back on top. Magnus taking it himself, finds Dennis in the corner. He steps inside for the mid-range. Off the side of the rim though, no good. Re 
Reed forces the defender to jump up. Thought about the mid-range instead of three for Mackey, way to the right. And we are all tied up. This has been an exciting first half. We expected nothing less between the four and the five seeds, and we've had tremendous games all day. TLU beating Dallas, Shriner beating St. Thomas on the women's side, and so the third quarterfinal of the afternoon shaping up to be a classic. With a minute to go, Colorado College 22, Shriner 22, Romero with ball in hand. Ruig off the screen. Lots of movement off the ball. Gets it to Dennis. Shot clock now at seven. Magnus doubled in the corner. Ruig over to Romero. He'll have to go up from the free throw line. Count it. Edgar Romero, the sophomore from Houston. A little homecoming for the Texas native. Gives Colorado College the lead with 30 seconds left in this first half. Mackey trying to go past Romero, finds room, gets the and one. And we are having a tug of war here over control of the lead for the game. See that little jab step got Romero to head the other direction. And all Mackey needed was a window. And a timeout will be called by Colorado College with 19 seconds left. Might as well use it if you're going to lose it. And the game is all tied up at 24. Get a great look at the bracket to get a full picture of what we're working with here in San Antonio. The winner of this game has a date with the St. Thomas Celts undefeated in conference play. They are in the arena arriving from Houston, patiently awaiting this. And then later tonight, we have more basketball on the way. Centenary against Southwestern. It just keeps on getting better, Reed. It really does. Most of these games, this one's exciting. Southwestern versus Centenary is going to be just as exciting, I'm sure of it. And as we come down to the wire here in this first half, it'll be interesting to see what Colorado College has drawn up. If you've tuned in to Tiger Network all season long, we've talked about it several times but it's worth repeating now that we're all here in one place. The SCAC, especially on the men's basketball side, is just absolutely filled with talent. And it's one of the few sports that you look at in the conference where anybody could win on any night. And right here, out of the timeout, Schreiner gets ahead with the Mackey free throw, but it's truly anyone's guess as to who will come out on top. And that's not something you can say in all sports for the conference. Shriner fans counting the shot clock down. Ruig puts it up with five. Off the front of the rim, rebound goes to Johnson. The heave on the way, no good. And the Mountaineers will take a one point lead into the halftime break. 25 to 24 over Colorado College, who desperately needed some points there at the end. They finished two of their last 12 to finish the half. Yeah, and Colorado College just kept giving the Mountaineers opportunities to score. And when you give another team opportunities to score, eventually they're going to take it. And we see that with the, sh with the Mountaineers going in to the half with a lead. So I don't think we have to tell you at this point, but I'll just make sure you know, don't go anywhere. Just a 15-minute break on Tiger Network, and we'll be right back with you for what should be an amazing second half of basketball.
I'm San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. I am a Trinity University alum, and I want you to know about my passion for these two vibrant communities. My alma mater is now a nationally recognized liberal arts university, offering fully integrated arts, humanities, STEM, and professional programs. Grounded in the liberal arts, Trinity graduates students who think critically, act meaningfully, and contribute confidently throughout their careers. As for San Antonio, Trinity is an oasis in the heart of a city that serves as a cultural bridge to the Americas. We are a diverse community that values inclusion and welcomes intellectual curiosity and spirited debate. We're a city that challenges convention and welcomes new ideas. Great things are happening at Trinity University in San Antonio and through all our connections to our multicultural world. Join me in being part of this exciting moment.
It is time for the second half inside Calgar Gym. And Reed, you took a look at the box score after that first half, and there's one thing that just cannot escape us. Yeah, and that's Camden Ross. He leads the team in points with 11. He's got seven rebounds. He's three away from a double-double, two steals, and two assists. He leads the team in all of those categories. He's just been doing everything. It's exactly what Schreiner wants to see. He was held to seven and six points respectively in the Mountaineers' two losses to Colorado College earlier this year. But it looks like he has made an adjustment, and we'll see if that second half can continue that trend from the first. He'll try it early, and right on cue, Camden Ross gets another two for number two. We know, talking to both coaches, that they felt the reason Camden Ross struggled in those matchups with the Tigers is that length that we talked about in the first half. Colorado College just throwing all sorts of size his way. But what we've seen today, and there's a rejection from Camden Ross flying high in the air. But then a travel by Cervantes will keep it right here. A lot of Ross's shots, Reed, have been over the top of Colorado College defenders rather than going at their size. Yeah, and it's those kind of adjustments that make him such a special player. Bounce pass into Boykin, leads to five travels now. Yeah. I mean, how, how long is the flight from Colorado o College to here? A couple of hours. But this is not the traveling they wanted to do this weekend, that's for sure. Schreiner looking to capitalize on the air. Mackey going straight into the body of Russo and getting a couple. It is a five-point lead for the Mountaineers who have come out of the half firing. De Hoyos closely guarding Russo, has to give it up to Filio. Filio goes up and he's denied a lane, looking for Price to bail him out, a dribble and the shot. But the foul looks to be before the shot went up. Nice job there by Adrian Price, being in the right place at the right time to help out Filio. Price wins the jump match there. Boykin over to Ruick, swings it to Filio, drives left, now right. Cleared away by Ross, and here comes Cervantes charging hard. Now takes a step back, finds Mackey top of the key, forces a defender to fly. There's Ross to clean it up. Can't finish that one, though. Bit of a collision with his own man there. Boykin ran into Price, so he has to have Russo now Price with it. Russo all alone for three. But before he could get it off, a foul away from the ball. That's going to be against Devin Filio. Schreiner fans saying you can't do that. No, you certainly can't. There was a reason why Russo was so open. And that's magic number 13, but not the magic they want. 13 turnovers by Colorado College to Shriner's six, the biggest story of the game thus far. Yeah, it's these turnovers that keep Shriner in the game. And in the game they are. Alex DeHoyo circles around for two, and it's the largest lead of the night. Seven for Shriner. Cervantes guarding Ruig, who gets a little separation. That rolls in for him. A much needed bucket for the Tigers, who have not scored in several minutes, even going back to before the first half. De Hoyos feeling it, finds a man in the corner. That's gonna be a missed three, but the smaller defender, the smaller player, sorry, in De Hoyos gets the offensive board going straight at Price. Let's try it again. A three blocked by Dittman. 
Then might have been another block by Crawford. Taking the tumble there was Mackey. Colorado College going the other way. A three splashes home for Trey Crawford. Three triples for number 22. And the Tigers pull within two. Yeah, big momentum shift here in favor of Colorado College. De Hoyos using the contact in his favor. He'll go to the line. Third foul on Boykin. Still so early in the second half and he is dejected by it. You can see him walking to the bench as De Hoyos puts up a free throw here. Knocks it down, Alex De Hoyos, the graduate student, fifth year senior from Friendswood, Texas. One of two Mountaineers to be on the first team all conference last year. He has averaged over 14 points over the last three seasons. And he is a weapon that Coach Rock, as he likes to go by, is happy to have in his arsenal late in the year. Knocks down two free throws and pushes Shriner's lead back to four. Dittman draws the contact and he'll get a trip to the line. Kevin Dittman, one of these Tigers with great length that has shown up late in the year, short on that first free throw. The sophomore from Valley View, Pennsylvania, stands at 6'5", and he's had as many as four blocks in a game. So he is a menacing threat down low. Gets that second free throw to go home. Schreiner, 33, Colorado 30, with 16 to go. Quick decision. And it was knocked loose as he went up for it. Mackey taking things into his own hands, but that Colorado College blocking game, it's as good as it's been in the last few games. Another alley-oop attempt, won't land, but Mackey, spot up three, short. De Hoyos can't collect the board. Ruig out running, has three Shriner defenders though, and now he slows it down. Foul called here on number zero, Dylan Mackey. And it takes us to our first media timeout of the second half. 15.42 to go, Shriner 33, Colorado 30. But we'll stick around with you here on Tiger Network. We talk so much about the end of the Shriner season, Reed. But just as important is the beginning of the season for Shriner because it was not the start they were hoping for at all. They began the year 0-4 in SCAC play. A team that was picked to finish third, starting like that, really made a lot of people ask a lot of questions. What is going on in Shriner? Coming off a year in which they posted a program best wins, in which their coach was coach of the year. They did a lot to get back on track. And it's just amazing to see the journey that they've taken from having their backs against the wall to being on top in this conference tournament game. And it's what coach El Rakabawi says is really the definition of the season. He, of course, pointed to that Camden Ross performance to get them in the tournament, but he says it's been that mentality of we're in the playoffs during the regular season, guys. We have to win every single game, and they won just enough at the end of the season to get them where they are now. Yeah, and all you need is a chance. When you get that chance and you go out there, you can shock the conference with a big win against Colorado College. They have the lead right now, and I don't think they're going to let up. It's a Shriner program that has become used to success. They won the championship in 2018. Coach El Rakabawi was the assistant that year, the head coach for Shriner, and none other than Connor Kirkendall, who might sound familiar because he's the head coach of Southwestern, who plays just after this out of the timeout, a turnover. Cervantes short on the three. Crawford loses it, but gets it back in the hands of Ruig. 
Lots of connections in this conference. El Rockabawi and Kirkendall, just one of many. Although it can get very confusing, so we'll stick to that for now. Crawford here loses the ball. It's De Hoyos. Who else has three on two, but doesn't go quick enough. Instead goes right at Crawford. Can't get that one to go, but he gets his own miss. Cervantes, another three. Off the left rim. De Hoyos, look at his effort. Alex De Hoyos. He's been here the longest, and he's still trying the hardest. Yeah, and absolutely so smart of him to get that ball off that Tiger defender. The quick pass into number four, Darian Gibson. Then the Mountaineers back it up. Let Camden Ross go to work, and he can't get to work because there's some contact. A foul drawn by Ross. Team foul number three, second on Price. And a 30-second timeout coming, so these coaches really wanting to utilize their conversations with their squad. 14 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Schreiner still up three. What's really seemed like a home game for the Shriner Mountaineers with so much maroon and white in the stands. Yeah, they're not that far away from campus, just up in Kerrville, up I-10. And that fan base has really shown out tonight. And we'll see if they can give them some confidence and motivation as they are one of their last nine. Definitely trying to climb out of that offensive hole. But if you're a Shriner fan, I think you have to look at a motto from Team Rocket. Were you a Pokemon fan, Reed? I was. You know Team Rocket? Prepare for trouble, make it double. Well, the Shriner women winning the first game for Shriner. Now the men trying to make it a perfect two for two and making it a day to remember if you're a Mountaineer fan. Exactly. And speaking of making it double, Camden Ross two rebounds away from a double-double. It's almost automatic at this point for Camden Ross. He's got nine double-doubles this year. So it's funny that a double-double would put him into double digits in double-doubles. It's doubles on top of doubles on top of doubles. It's almost like that Burger King commercial. <laughs> did I get that right? I think I did. I won't sing it for you, though. As we're back from the timeout, Camden Ross with the ball in hand. Cervantes turning the corner. Strong dribble to the rim and an even stronger finish. Cervantes, the sophomore from Bull Verde, also went to Steel High School right alongside Ross. And the teammates making it work here for Shriner. McFarlane to Price, strong dribble, blocked by Shriner. And they get the ball, Price crawling for it. All the bodies on the floor, that ends up with the Hoyos. Here comes Gibson, tries to dump it off to Ross, but that was a lot to handle in a close amount of space. So that's a turnover by the Mountaineers. Yeah, and Ross really doing a lot there to try and get that ball down the court. We'll see if the Tigers can end a two minute scoring drought on this drive. Trey Crawford struggling with it in the backcourt. Three seconds to get it across. They do, but it's tipped away, and it'll stay with Colorado College. Cervantes pointing at the clock, though, saying it should be 10 seconds. Coach Rock saying the same thing, but the official looks like he's explaining that since it was tipped, they'll get a chance to keep the ball. And oh, so important is ball control, especially when the game is as close as this. Officials talking about it. And they're saying that's a 10 second violation. No, they were holding up 10 with two of, two of the officials were holding up the 10 sign, thought they were saying a 10 second violation, but Colorado College keeps possession. They're down five with under 14 minutes to go. Crawford's been on fire, swings it inside to McFarland, goes left. Not gonna go for him off the glass, but De Hoyos loses control of it near the CC bench and the Tigers will take over. Crawford, such a sneaky 6'8". He's so lanky and has so much arm to him. 
that it really gets by you that he is so, so tall at 6'8". Here on the other end, the three won't fall for Ruig. Ross gets the board and he's getting there, Reed. De Hoyos giving directions. Mackey utilizing the Ross screen. Now Cervantes with the three bounces out. Board goes to Ruig. You can see the impact De Hoyos has had on Ruig. Ruig with just two points today. And there is another traveling violation. Colorado College with six traveling calls that we can remember leading to 16 turnovers now. Schreiner still with just seven. And in a game that has been so close, you look for any little opening that explains why what's happening is happening. And so far that has been the case. A pull up jumper for De Hoyos bounces out back iron. And now it's Schreiner who has not taken advantage of Colorado College's slow offense. Two minutes without points for the Mountaineers. Crawford trying to get out of the drought. He won't. Jumping high there for the rebound is Evans. Cervantes to the corner. Mackey way over the rim. And now the Tigers looking to go the other way. So the offense has left the building in the second half. Yeah, very defensive. And when the defense is get going like this, every point counts. Knopziger tried the three. Cervantes will give it a shot. No, he will not, even though he knocked it down. An offensive foul called ahead of time, as it looks like that is Russo who took the big hit and still on the court. So we'll take a quick break as the official timeout here anyway. Schreiner, 35, Colorado 30, with 11.54 to go. Sincerely hope Alex Russo is okay there. Took a hard hit. You might have seen it on the replay. Was able to walk off the court on his own power, and he is sitting down on the bench, not being looked at by a trainer, so that's a positive sign for now. The junior from Bronxville, New York, has become a key component to this Colorado College offense and defense, really, starting the last 13 games after not starting any of the first eight. But Coach Connor Rowe trusting him to be the point guard of this offensive attack. In his place now, the first time we have Orion Samikoglu. And that's gonna be a push off for number 23, newly into the game. So not the uh, entrance he wanted to make. No, and if you're Colorado College, this is another opportunity that you're giving to the Mountaineers to extend their lead. Get a good look at the extension of the arm. Samikoglu thinks there was nothing wrong, but the official thinks otherwise. The Tigers' defense, though, makes up for it. The steal by Knopziger. And here comes Samikoglu, the freshman from San Diego, California. He has not played versus Schreiner this year, but Coach Conero turning to him after Russo exited the game. 
Boykin guarded by De Hoyos. Now Novziger doubled, finds Sami Koglu over to Crawford from deep. Rims out, but there's Boykin to clean up the mess. Timeout immediately after the made bucket by Colorado College. So we've really come to a standstill with a lot of stoppages here in the second half. But right now, Schreiner holding on to a three-point advantage with 11.07 to go. And Coach Conero really diving into his roster today for many different reasons. Hope Russo's okay, but also just trying something new, see if it can work against Schreiner. Yeah, and now that it's a one-possession game, he probably wants to talk to the team and say, this is what we're going to do to get the lead back. And once we do, foot on the gas, don't look back. For Coach Conero, he said the defining moment of his team season was early on in the year when they were in Memphis in a Rhodes tournament. They lost to them and lost to Covenant, and he sat the team down. They had some very honest discussions about where they were and where they wanted to go. Says everyone was super honest with each other, and it really built trust and set the stage for that 3-0 conference start that turned heads and ultimately got them here. He called the timeout to try to get his defense in order. Force Evans to back it out. Shot clock at 12. And the call going against Sumikoglu again. So he's come in just about a minute or so and already two fouls going against the freshman. Just the 14th appearance of the year for Samikoglu. Making sure he's defending the right guy, switching spots with Boykin. Pick and roll, Cervantes has to give up the dribble and then gives up the ball. It'll go to Colorado College. And I think he thought it was going to stay with Schreiner, but Colorado College read it right. They get the ball back. Schreiner, zero points in the last four minutes, yet they're up by three. Ball goes out of bounds, but it'll stay with the black and gold. Coach Rock making a change. Mateus Reichart Bloom in there. The junior from Santa Maria, Brazil. South America in the building. 6-4 defender there. Stops Ruig in his tracks now to Samikoglu before Boykin takes point. Step back three from Boykin to Strong. Evans collects the miss. Ross trying to post up. Boykin gets in front of it. Nearly forces the turnover. Mackey recovers. Loose ball. Anybody's game. It's Samikoglu. He has Crawford. Crawford might have been tipped there by Schreiner. But the cleanup duty done by Colorado College to pull within one. It was Samikoglu and Crawford running the fast break. Crawford couldn't get that first look to go. But there is the man of the moment. He just came in. And he is making Coach Conero look good with that decision. Mini delay there after the made basket. Schreiner up one as we're halfway home in this second half. Reed turning the corner. He'll pop up from three, and he's fouled as he does it. Three free throws coming up for Jackson Reed. Yeah, and if you're Colorado College, that's the last thing you wanted to do there. Give Schreiner a trip to the charity stripe. And no question about that one, a full body shot as he landed from that three-pointer. So, honestly, pretty impressive to have three fouls in such a short amount of time. That's what Samikoglu has done. He also made a bucket in the meantime, but now three free throws served up to Reed, who misses the first. Samikoglu looking at Coach Conero, saying, my absolute bad. And he is checking out as yet another New Braunfels unicorn shows up in Calgar Gym. We have seen so many of those, haven't we, over this season? 
Two missed free throws now for Reed. They have been seven for eight from the line had the Mountaineers been. They got a break on the foul called against Samikoglu, yet they haven't been able to cash in. They typically shoot 68% from the line. They're right above it with 70% now. Third one does drop in for Reed. And Schreiner gets into their full court press. Boykin waiting for the screen. Defenders switch, doesn't matter. Boykin will get a charity stripe visit. And we'll see if he can tie up this game. Foul number 41, Mario Johnson is third. Team foul number five. Team foul number five. Two shots for so Colorado one. College will get at least one free throw the rest of the way. Boykin will try this first one. Well short. Coach Conero calls Boykin a special talent who has given his full self to Colorado College, coming all the way from Baltimore to the Rocky Mountain State. And he has trusted the process, which is why, as a freshman, he has the second most points in the conference. Gets the second free throw to go and pulls Colorado College to within one with nine minutes remaining. It was all Colorado College in the first half until a late push by Schreiner. Schreiner jumped ahead by seven in this second half, and now Colorado College trying to come right back. Missed three, but an offensive board by who else? Camden Ross continues to devour the rebounds, and I think that gives us some double trouble, doesn't it, Reed? Yeah, prepare for trouble, make it double. Camden Ross, a double-double for the night. He amazes night in and night out. Crawford and Knobziger working a little two-man game. It's Knobziger with the ball. He's doubled down low. Doesn't matter. Two points. Okay. Offense now back to what we saw in the first half. Mackey nearly travels with it. Finds Johnson a big hop step. Waits patiently. Still can't finish. And the rebound cleared out by Filio. Colorado College trying to reclaim the lead. Crawford, Romero, too strong on the three. Filio gets the rebound. Knobziger had position for a moment. Instead, Boykin in the lane. His layup won't go out of bounds. Schreiner basketball. Time out on the floor, under eight minutes means we have another media timeout. Shriner 38, Colorado College 37. We saw it with Texas Lutheran in Dallas and we're seeing it here tonight. The four five seed always gives us such a treat. It really does and it helps when the league is as balanced as it is this year. 37, 38, this game, there's no telling who can win this one. Schreiner last year, no stranger to these close games in the SCAC tournament. You might remember they won by just one, a buzzer beater lay-in against Southwestern to get them into the semifinals where they then lost to Trinity. That tournament was up in Sherman, hosted by Austin College. They're trying to make it a little easier on themselves and I was talking to Coach Rock before this game. He was watching his women's team, his counterpart, Coach Stevens winning their game and he says, gosh, I needed a little cool down, needed to feel calm before my game. I couldn't have my heart rate so high, but he was just happy the women won and his men now are in a very similar spot, a close game that will go down to the end. Yeah, for sure. And right now, it seems like the offenses are coming alive here at the end. So we're gonna see a lot of shots being taken and we're gonna see a lot of points being put on the board, hopefully. And we'll see if Schreiner can outpace Colorado College. 
Camden Ross down low. That's way too much room for Camden Ross. Seems pretty simple when you have Camden Ross on your team. You get a timeout, well, just call up a play that gives it to number two. And that works both ways as number two, Boykin, tries to get that one but couldn't finish. Now a two-on-one turns into two-on-two. Not to worry for Bronson Evans. The little runner goes and the lead quickly back up to five after the Tigers pulled to within one. Yeah, and this is good momentum for Schreiner and for Colorado College. You have to respond here. And as the game gets later and later, the Shriner fans making more and more noise. Shot clock approaching single digits as Crawford drives with the ball. That's going to be an offensive foul. Crawford going hard to the rim, a little too hard in the eyes of the official. Turnover number 18 for Colorado College. And that was the last thing you wanted if you're Colorado College to give Shriner another chance. It's been the story all game. Mackey sees a lane, attacks it, now has to wait, finds the open Evans for three, short, and that's still zero three-pointers made for Shriner on the evening. Boykin takes it quickly the other way, gets two. Wasting no time there is the freshman. So neither side able to put the other away. De Hoyos using the Camden Ross screen. Alley-oop can't connect this time. De Hoyos nearly steals it back. Ruit gets it to Romero and here comes CC Romero dumps it to Boykin. But yet another traveling call. And a technical foul going to be called on Boykin. Had some choice words for Schreiner and continues to have some for Bronson Evans. And it's getting chippy in San Antonio. Yeah, and a technical foul, you can't have that when the game is this close. And now they're saying it's a double technical foul, so Evans and Boykin both being given one. So instead of a free throw, just a side out for Schreiner. These teams are playing for it all, everything on the line. And you can tell, emotions are high. Fake handoff by Ross. Now he does give it to Cervantes. They're loving that alley-oop, and it counts! Somehow, Camden Ross got that pass and dropped it in. Unreal. We'll get a look at it. The pass wasn't the best from Cervantes, yet it was enough for Ross. Overpriced at that. Just unbelievable. How uh, Ross, he's a boss on the court and he gets an opportunity for another point here. Completes the three-point play and the Mountaineer fans going wild. A six-point lead with 5.48 to go as Camden Ross has taken over yet again. 19 points, 12 rebounds, four assists, and three steals. Cervantes all over Russo newly back into the game after taking the hard hit. He can't close the deal, but Adrian Price there to save the day. Mackey and Ross have been loving this pick and roll game. Now the floor cleared for number zero, Dylan Mackey. One on one with Devin Filio. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Mackey drives left, finds De Hoyos. Spin and in. We are seeing some plays in Calgar Gym. High quality basketball at every turn. Price doubled, loses the dribble, finds Russo. 
Right back to the big man Price. He goes left, takes the contact, couldn't get it down, but he'll get a pair of free throws. Yeah, and this game, the offenses have come alive. Shriner, four for their last five shots. Adrian Price, two shots. Adrian Price, the sophomore from Aurora, Colorado, gets the first one down, 6-7 center. Coach Connor is saying he worked so hard in the summer. He lost a lot of weight to get into the, weight, into the shape that they wanted him in, and it has made him even more dangerous. He's more bouncy, more athletic than he's ever been. And he gets Colorado College to within four. A big hit taken by Russo, it looked like. Unless he was faking it. No call, though. Mackey playing all sorts of games on offense. Drops it off to Ross, who's short on the floater. That time, the foul not missed. As poor Alex Russo has taken shot after shot, and he's even giving a little smile towards his bench as he's become a little bit of a punching bag in this second half. Well, when you get to the free throw line that much, sometimes you just gotta take it on the chin. One and one on the way as Colorado College reaches the bonus. He'll earn a second as Russo, number 11, been waiting to do this for a while, calling Colorado College games. How can you see an Alex Russo and not think of Wizards of Waverly Place? I mean, it's right there. And Russo here trying to cast his spell on this game. Gets a pair of free throws and pulls Colorado College to within two. Thought he was coming off the game. And Coach Conner had to say, stay in there, young man. You just brought us closer. Now stay in there, play defense. And there he is, guarding Cervantes, coming up the court. Under four to go, ball lost for a moment, then it is gathered by Russo. Here comes the Wizard, takes contact, can't drop it home. Evans, the big rebound, clears it in the middle of four Tigers, and now four on one. De Hoyos from beyond the arc, drains it! The first three-pointer of the game for Schreiner as a team. Puts the Mountaineers up five with three and a half to go. At three, could not have come at a better time for the Mountaineers. Knopfziger down low, off the rim, off the glass, excuse me, and in. So the Tiger is not sulking in that big three from Shriner. Both of these teams, blow after blow. Mackey kicks it to Cervantes from deep. Now it's gonna be raining threes for Schreiner. Cervantes knocks it down. And the Kerrville chaos has fully made its way to Calgard. Mountaineers up six. Filio with the ball. Russo barking orders as the Tigers look to slow things down. Knopfziger spins in the lane. Too strong the board by Crawford. Able to put two on the board for Colorado College. And a timeout called by Coach Conero. 2.30 left in this one. Shriner 53, Colorado College 49. Yeah, we are coming down to the wire here. Everything's coming alive. The energy on the court is awesome. The play is awesome. This game has just overall been awesome. I think you're so right to use that word over and over. It's just as simple as that sometimes. Awesome basketball that we are lucky to get to call. Two coaches right now who are no doubt looking in their back pocket, seeing what they can come up with. Jeff Conero in his third year with Colorado College, bringing them to the tournament for the first time in five years. Meanwhile, Coach Marwan El Rakabawi bringing his Shriner Mountaineers back to the tournament, looking to reclimb that peak that they reached in 2018. It's his fourth year as head coach after spending a couple as an assistant. And what a journey it's been for both of these. Coach Conero spending eight years as an assistant at California State University Bakersfield. Meanwhile, Coach El Rakabawi making the journey all the way from Alexandria, Egypt 
before moving to Houston as a four-year-old. Now he has spent his whole life in Texas. You never know what stories you're going to find, and the stories are just rewriting themselves tonight in this close matchup. Yeah, the SCAC draws from players and coaches all around the world. It might be the Southern Collegiate Athletic Conference, but it's been the World Collegiate Athletic Conference when you look at where some of these players and coaches have come from, especially after looking at Egypt for the coach, you look at the roster for Colorado College, they're from just about everywhere. And they are pulling things from everywhere as their fans make some noise here. Schreiner up four out of the timeout with just over two to go. Cervantes feeling good, the spot up three. Won't go this time, board cleared by Crawford. The Mountaineers had been 0 for 16 from beyond the arc. They hit their last two. And then the slam dunk shot. Didn't work for Crawford, but it does send him to the line as he tried to pull Verizon Schreiner. Yeah, big dunk attempt right there. But he'll get something less flashy maybe, but maybe a bit more consistent on a free throw. Schreiner wanted an offensive foul. Instead, they're gonna get a fifth foul called on Bronson Evans who was held quiet tonight. The senior from Houston, Texas with just two points and five fouls has to exit here. And Coach Rock going to number 41. We saw him before, Mario Johnson in his place. Two oh one left as these two free throws make their way up. A rainbow shot drops in. The entire Colorado College women's team standing on their feet right behind the men's team's bench. They're providing almost as much noise as the Shriner faithful on the other side. And the lead is down to two. Shriner 53, Colorado College 51 with two minutes left. You can hear those defense chants. Those are the Lady Tigers. Cervantes taking on Ruig, loses the ball. Mackey there to pick it up. Now he takes the drive over Filio, loses it, and here comes Boykin. Has Russo beside him, taken away by Cervantes. Johnson falls on it, and the timeout called by Schreiner. Heads up play by Johnson, who just came into the game. Yeah, and we are getting down to the wire here. This is where legends are made here in the conference tournament. 30-second timeout called as Johnson dove to the floor the first year from Houston, Texas. Played in 10 of the last 12 games after just playing in one of the first 13. And so both of these teams, they've been forced to turn to names you're not necessarily used to if you're a fan of them. But nonetheless, they are coming through when it matters most. Yeah, they're coming through. They're keeping it close. And when the gap is two points, we have really seen that the offenses have been coming alive. Schreiner currently outscoring Colorado College by one in this half after the first half went the other way. It means it's a two-point advantage for Schreiner. The team shooting 36% and 37% respectively. And the turnover is starting to even up as well. We've talked about it so much for the Tigers with 20, but the Mountaineers now with 15 themselves. They're going to have to hold on to the ball here with a minute and a half remaining. De Hoyos has the big, lengthy Trey Crawford right on him. De Hoyos, one of the best in the conference. Hands it off to Mackey. Now Mackey has Filio on him. Mackey goes left, now right. Tries to bounce it, and the Tigers have two roaming. Boykin, all alone, ties the game at 53. <laughs> Under a minute to go, tie ball game in Calgar Gym. What a quarterfinal we have for you. De Hoyo setting up the ball to Camden Ross. 
Here comes Mackey around. De Hoyos uses the screen from Ross. Now driving off the window and in. Coach El Rockabawi calls a timeout as Alex De Hoyos, who Coach Rock calls a cold-blooded killer, coming up with a killer shot that time. Yeah, and right now, you can feel the entire court ramping up. 39.8 seconds left, and it's going to come down to the final second, it feels like. What's so amazing is you get a look at that tough shot put in by De Hoyos is that after being on the first team all SCAC last year, after averaging over 14 points the last three years, De Hoyos has not had the same type of year he's used to. He's averaging 6.5 a game. He is playing in fewer minutes, but as the tournament and the end of the season have come around, Coach Rock saying they know what they have in him. They know they can trust him. And he had his season high 15 points against Texas Lutheran in that game that clinched their playoff spot. And now in the latest moments with 39 seconds left, he comes through offensively in a way that he hasn't done much of the season. Yeah, and when you can come in and just be clutch like that, it really shows how special of a player that he is. And right now, Shiner's really gonna need him for these last 40 seconds. It really doesn't get much more special than Alex De Hoyos. Last year, he became the first player in conference history to lead in assists and steals since Brian Britt of center in 2001. That's a 22-year record that Alex De Hoyos was able to match. And right now, in that clutch factor, like you said earlier, Reed, no one more clutch than De Hoyos. Colorado College will look to bark back they're down two, but still have plenty of time. They have a timeout in their pocket. And they have the full support of the women's team behind them. It's been a struggle offensively in this second half after they got out to the lead in the first half. The Tigers beat Shriner twice earlier this year. Who will get the magical third opportunity in their column? Ball tipped on the inbound, so let's do it again. Filio bringing it in over Johnson. And the clock did not run, so the official will make sure that they took off just a little bit off of there. They take off point eight off the clock. Or it looks like a full second, 38.8. Yep, the correction's made by the P8. So here we go, 38.8 to go. Colorado College down two. Inbound to Crawford. Handoff to Boykin, a collision and a foul. DeHoyos wants him to look at it. But Colorado College in the bonus, they'll shoot even though that foul happened on the complete opposite end of the court. Good on the first one is Boykin. And this is a big shot here. This is to tie the game up. The freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. Only one player in the entire conference has scored more than him. He has sparkled all year long, trying to even it up with under 35 seconds on the way and good. 55 all in San Antonio. Schreiner, no timeouts left, so they have to bring it across. De Hoyos going to be the trusted man. Russo trying to stay on top of De Hoyos. Now some action. Ross getting closer to the ball, has it in hand. Looking for Johnson inside, loses control on the floor. Shot clock down to two. 
Cervantes has to go up and he gets it to go! Bo Cervantes with four seconds left puts Schreiner up by two. And a timeout called by Colorado College as Cervantes put up the desperation heave and the window helped it go. And that was one of the most clutch shots you are going to see in this tournament. Absolutely amazing. Bo Cervantes, the sophomore from Steele High School, having a homecoming in the Alamo City. Coach Rock says he is a true leader, someone who is enthusiastic on the hardest of days, whether it's a Monday after a long trip or a random Wednesday practice where you just don't want to go anymore. Bo Cervantes is the one pumping up his teammates, getting the energy in the gym, and the smile on his face right now says it all. Putting his team ahead, still four seconds to go, plenty of time for the Tigers to get a shot up, but it'll take a big time clutch moment for Colorado College now. Yeah, it really will, and four seconds. It's plenty of time to get the ball down the court, but we'll see if they can get it into a two-point range. It's just like last year all over again, although this time there's still time on the clock. Schreiner, a tip in as the buzzer sounded to beat Southwestern last year. This time, just four seconds left, and the officials are making sure everything is in order, time-wise, possession-wise, and timeout-wise. But the Schreiner Mountaineers, a defensive stand away from a trip to the semifinals. During this timeout, Shriners bench receiving a warning for their reaction to that shot. But can you blame them? I'm not sure you can. The excitement shown by everyone in this gym that is wearing maroon and white. The women's team still in attendance. And a good portion of Kerrville's population in the house as well. Coach Rock, Coach Conero, wrapping up conversations as now a delay of game warning is served to Schreiner. So two straight announcements going against them. But as long as they hold on to this four seconds, they'll forget about it all. Coach Conero trying to draw up the play of his life and it'll have to be all 90 feet of the court. Trey Crawford will send it in. Gets it into Price, dumps it off to Boykin. Boykin running quickly, puts it up, can't get it! And Schreiner wins it! The Mountaineers are heading to the semifinals. Incredible finish there. And Boykin to have such speed to put up that shot. Heartbreaking for Colorado College. The replay on the way here. Boykin going the full length of the court. Can't ask for much better of a look. Tried to bank it in, and it just was not meant to be for the Charm City freshman. So the Shriner Mountaineers do in fact make it double trouble. Kerrville comes to town and sweeps the day. The women, the men, they'll be back tomorrow and we'll be back in just a bit, 25 minutes of a break to prepare for Centenary against Southwestern. Can you believe after that we still get more basketball? Well, we do. Just a magical night for the Mountaineers. 20 points, 12 rebounds for Camden Ross, his 10th double-double of the year. You really can't ask for much more if you're an SCAC basketball fan. You really can't, and we get more after this. That's crazy. Crazy indeed, but it is true, so don't go anywhere. Take a break, grab a drink, and be back with us in 25 minutes 
Before we sign off, we do want to congratulate Colorado College on a fantastic year, making the tournament for the first time since 2018. A hard-fought season and a hard-fought game just goes against them by one shot. To have a safe trip back to Colorado Springs and all the best moving forward. For Reed Rosales, I'm Brian Yanslison. See you in 25 minutes.